Welcome, 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 everybody. This is The Sunday Show. It is February 26, 2023. I'm Jimmy Snow, joined once again by Matt Dillahunty. Matt, how are you today? I'm, I'm overjoyed and abundantly blessed and just in the best possible way. Hashtag blessed. Uh, I, I actually unironically have started using that a little bit more. I'm, I'm enjoying co-opting some of this language that is being used. Uh, this is the Sunday show where you can call in and talk to two atheists like us, but we're not just atheists. We're also skeptics and humanists. Uh, but generally on Sunday, we try to keep topics to the spiritual, the theistic, the why do you believe in God? You can call us and say, hey, here's the reason why I think God makes sense. If it makes sense to us too, we're pro- we'll are probably agree with you and convert on the spot, but we're going to want to interrogate you a little bit beforehand. We're going to want to run through some of your reasonings there and see if it actually stands up to something like skepticism. Uh, apparently our, our video title says 2028, a slip of the finger, I'm afraid. Before we get started, a couple of things to tell you about. No, I already updated that. So you just need to refresh your browser. I thought I did it before the show, but uh, a few things before we get started here. Uh, first of all, very excited to announce that Obviously, you all know that programming has been expanding on the line, and now it is expanding in a way that all can't fit on just the line. So uh, we have some new shows and new programs. They will never overlap with existing shows. We're never going to have uh, uh, a show going at the same time as the Sunday show, for example. However, there will be days that have multiple shows in a day, and we have repurposed our old Clips channel Uh, And you will start to see new episodes of Cuz I Wanna, I think starting this week, as well as there will still be clips going out on this. But we're going to be launching a new show here very soon called Sexpectations with a focus on purity culture, sexual counseling, uh, and the like. And the, the main purpose of putting this now on a new channel, which you can find the link below, the new channel is just called The Line X the line with a space and the, and and we're trying to keep it very, very simple and easy to differentiate. Uh, it's just one X. It's not the line XXX for the record. It's just the line Although X. That one would be probably shadow banned even quicker, but uh, it would be funny. I think, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. And, and I think Apple would debate that we're actually calling it the line 10, but fuck Apple. Anyway, uh, uh, that's a very specific joke. Uh, the Line X, the link is down below, youtube.com, at The Line X. The other thing about that channel, will it will be often more adult-themed stuff in general. I've wanted to launch a show like this on this channel for a long time. However, uh, we have the higher risk of mass flag pearl clutching bans that are going to be temporary because we're not actually going to break any terms of service. However, it takes a couple of days to get those false flags taken care of. And in the meantime, when they hit you with those strikes, you can't live stream. So if that came in on a Monday, we'd now not be able to do hostility and the the hang up and Tacus on Thursday, potentially those three days while we wait for the strike to be lifted. So it is a bit of a more uh, adult themed version of the line. You're going to be some, seeing some stuff there, but we're also going to start putting episodes of Cuz I Wanna uh, with myself, with Matt, and perhaps anybody else who wanna as we try and build it up. Go and hit that uh, subscribe button over there. Again, link is down below. It's youtube.com slash at the line X because now URLs on YouTube have the at sign in them. And we all love that and think that that's not a wildly ridiculous choice to make by YouTube. Uh, Also, next Sunday is my birthday. We're going to do a long episode of the Sunday show. We will go long. I already worked that out with Arn and Arn's show over there, though I imagine I'll have to remind him today. But uh, uh, we've we've already worked that out. And then after our long show uh, at 7 o'clock Central Time, we'll do a Zoom with patrons where everyone can come and say, happy birthday, go fuck yourself to my face if they like. Uh, All you got to do is go to patreon.com slash call the line and... You can sign up there to uh, be a patron, any level, $5. It starts at $5 a month. You'll be able to join in with the, uh, the Jimmy's birthday Patreon stream next week. Lastly, uh, because we are expanding programming on the channel, we are in need of more call screeners and, call, or, and uh, chat moderators. And the chat moderators on the Line X, I think, will 
will want two or three per show minimum <laughs> ahead of time uh, uh, just because of the content at hand and because some people mistake, hey, an attractive person is talking about sex for I can say very creepy sexual things about the attractive person who's talking about sex. So uh, anyway, we could use more volunteers. We, can we could use more mods. If you have any interest, message me uh, at, or email me, dearmratheist at gmail.com. Put mod or screener somewhere in the subject line. And do know that you will need to have a Discord account uh, to be able to work with us. That's, that's how we collaborate with our moderators and stuff. Uh, I think that's everything I've got. Anything you've got that you want to, uh, you want to hit before uh, we get started? Sure, a couple things. I want to get to this this theist caller who who's already in. By the way, there are open lines. You can call the number down below there, but we we do have theists already uh, waiting now. There's a call screener in there to take care of stuff. I did a debate yesterday, and I, I haven't yet posted my debate review. I will be posting that um, either tomorrow or Tuesday, one of those two days, as I knock out a couple more videos for my Atheist Debates Patreon project. Uh, it was a kind of a last-minute uh, debate, and... Basically, I was contacted and said, hey, would you like to debate Is Christianity Rational tomorrow morning at 11 a.m.? And I don't remember the last time I, I tried doing a debate that early, but I said yes, and uh, I did it, uh, except that uh, I, I, rather than spoiling the debate, by all means, uh, you can go watch it some other uh, time. But it was yet another example of the subject of the debate is, is Christianity Rational? And one side never really addressed the debate. As a matter of fact, I think my debate opponent may have given the shortest and most vapid opening statement in the history of all of my debates. Uh, there was one other, there was a, a debate on Pascal's Wager where the guy talked for a while and never mentioned Pascal's Wager until the very, very end. Um, but in this case, uh, somebody took the and, and did a partial transcription of the debate and submitted it to chat GPT and said, told chat GPT, you know, pretend like you're a philosopher and analyze this debate and pretend like you're a Catholic and analyze this debate, whatever it was. Um, and it was a bunch of garbage that we got back uh, because and on all of them, chat GPT was thinking that this was a debate about morality. And while certainly moral issues came up, none of that had anything to do with whether or not Christianity was rational. And it really didn't have anything to do with the debate we had. Um, so, yeah, I'll be doing a full debate review about that. But if nothing else, it stresses the importance of A, setting the topic and being clear and defining terms before the debate begins. And then one thing I did yesterday is I didn't do this every time because I would have just been a broken record. But almost every time my opponent went off to talk about some other topic, I pointed out this debate's supposed to be about is Christianity rational? Are you going to talk about that? Are you going to you know define your Christianity? Are you going to give your definition of rational? Are, are we just going to go with my definition of rational? Because under mine, it's not. And he's like, I don't debate atheists, I debate materialists. And it was a, a hot mess. So make sure that, you know, it don't turn it into a drinking game. Don't, you know, if if you're pounding your head against the table or whatever, just move on to something else. And I'll have a debate review up where I go through it. But we got calls, including one. Um, uh, you want you want to just go take line one? Because I'm I'm intrigued. Yeah, go for it. Sweet, I will do that. Jackson in Georgia, pronouns are he him. It says here, Jackson, uh, you're a theist who says people who don't believe in God have no basis for their morality. Welcome to the Sunday Show. Yeah, so I think that people who don't believe in God don't have any basis for their morality, because if you look at all of the great dictators in the world, like Pol Pot, then they were atheists. And I feel like you should really be able to judge something by the history of how it is done over time. Right, I'm going to pause you for a second here, Jackson, uh, because first of all, I, no offense, but you just made a non-case. So first of all, when it comes to something like morality, what you what you want to say is not, I think that people who don't believe in God don't have a basis for their morality. What you want to say is that um, there is no basis for morality if God doesn't exist, because people who don't believe in a God could still use this, the same foundation that you're using to have a foundation for morality, even if they don't believe in God. 
But instead, not only did you frame your position incorrectly, but then you raised something that's like every dictator was an atheist, which is simply false. Um, and whether or not somebody's a dictator is independent from whether or not they have a foundation for their morality or whether their morality is wrong. So everything that you just said was an absolute train wreck hot mess that wasn't an argument or evidence. Would you like to try again? Because I have a basis for my moral system. Do you have some objection to my moral system that is solved by yours? You know, like, I actually don't think there'd be a problem if, like, all the atheists basically just LARPed as Christians, like not from like pretending to believe in that's that. Not, but, like, I'm, I'm sorry, like Jackson. I'm sorry, Jackson. But I'm sorry, I, Jackson. I but that's not what. I'm, okay, so I'm going to mute you. I'm sorry, Jackson, but that's not what I asked, and that's not relevant. So you called in to talk about morality. I'm happy to talk about morality. I've talked about it many times. But you have an assertion that atheists don't have a basis for morality, and I'm telling you that I do. And asked if you had some objection to it that your system solved. Uh, I didn't ask you if you thought it would be okay if people LARPed as Christians or whatever else. It, you really got to focus here if we're going to actually have a discussion about morality. Otherwise, I have to move on. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I didn't understand you. Um, yeah, uh, so you're basically asking if I have an issue with your morality? Yes. You say, your assertion is that I don't have a foundation for my morality, and I've I'm on record many times lecturing on morality from a secular perspective and how my position is basically summed up as well-being as the foundation for morality. Mm -hmm. Are you opposed to well-being? I, I guess, yeah. I just kind of like the idea you're of You're opposed, you're opposed to well-being? Okay. I, I, see, like, here's the thing. I, I, I don't think you, I don't think you are. I don't think you are opposed to well-being. Are, are you not constantly trying to do things that benefit you and other people? I just kind of do what I'm supposed to do, but like, I guess that how do you you to do? From a certain I, point no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jackson. Uh, I'm starting to think that you are a dishonest troll who doesn't actually want to discuss this. And that's not where I want to be. I want to give you every opportunity to do this right. What I asked is if you objected to well-being and your response was yes. And then you went on to say, you just do what you're supposed to. So let's start with the first question. Are you in favor of well-being or are you opposed to well-being? Can I be neutral on it? Because like, I feel like I'm leaning towards opposed, but I don't want to like, like, I could just so, say I don't so, know, but I want to say neutral or that's, opposed. It's fine if you don't know or if you want to be neutral, but I'm saying if you're trying to make a decision about what you should do, aren't you... Don't you think it would be the, the right course of action for you would be to do the thing that actually increases or improves well-being as opposed to stands in opposite? For example, um, if, if you kill someone, you are depriving them mm -hmm. of well-being. And if you don't kill someone, then you are at least neutral or, or advocating towards their well-being. Why, why could you possibly be neutral or opposed to well-being? I, I guess it's just because I feel like an individual isn't a good judge of well-being, so they should just sort of follow. I, I didn't. Tradition. I didn't ask you that. See, here's the problem, Jackson. Either you're a troll or you are in ten miles over your head. I didn't ask you whether any individual is a good judge of well-being. I asked if you were opposed to well-being. Oh, okay. Like. I had trouble understanding that. Um, yeah, you so, do. I'm gonna. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let I you go, so. and and you you take some time and think these things through and come up with the moral argument that you actually want to make and what you think your moral position is, and call us back and we'll discuss it. That way, it doesn't look like I'm steamrolling over somebody who doesn't have a clue about the topic. Thanks. And we're back. Seems I, like a good place to insert a commercial or something. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I I think he was just about to get to the good part. Uh not really. Uh oh, I, I think he was just about to get to the to the trolling part. I if you see if, if you go back and watch the tape, you will see a, a shit eating grin within five seconds of the first call. There's just something I have. There's some sort of troll dar. I can hear it in their voice, and I knew from the beginning this guy is not for real. And I and I stand by it. Uh I, I don't think he's for real either, but it, it, because I'll tell you why I don't think he's for real. 
Um, every time I interrupted to make a point, he just sat there quietly and waited for his turn to speak again and then said whatever came out of his mouth. People don't tend to do that. Uh, the exception being, of course, when I had to mute. Here's the thing. I'm happy to have a discussion about morality. And if so, if you're going to call in about morality, what you need to do is have at least some understanding or ask us what our foundation is for morality. My position is pretty simple. I'm not aware of any objection to the moral system that I advocate, which is solved in any way by appealing to a God. At the end of the day, if I have a foundation of well-being and you have a foundation of God said so, then we both have some foundation. I don't agree with your foundation because I don't see any evidence that a God said anything or that anything a God said would necessarily be moral. You have all of your work in front of you. My foundation being well-being, well-being of thinking creatures, et cetera, if, you, if I ask if you're in favor of that or opposed to that and you want to remain neutral on well-being, I, I can't take you seriously. You yeah. know, it, 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 do you look both ways before you cross the street? Well, then clearly you care about your well-being. Whether or not you care about the well-being of others is another issue. But you can construct all this up. I almost lost it. I just kind of do what I'm supposed to. Yeah. Was, How do you know what you're supposed to do? Yeah. But. Anyway, I'm ready for the next. Great. We've got Haley in Delaware. Uh, Pronounce to she, her. Welcome to the, to the Sunday show, Dan. Haley. Hey, hey, thank you very much. I'm happy to happy to be here. Happy to... We're happy How to you have doing? you. What do you want? What, what, what did you want to ask about? Suggest. Um, well, it says here I wanted in the to call talk screener, about... you wanted to talk about how the hateful rhetoric of some atheists is counterproductive to their goals. Mm -hmm. Well, most, I'd say. What are the Wait, atheist most, goals? Most, <laughs> Sorry. Like, okay, sure. Go with that. Yeah, yeah. Haley, what are, what are the atheist goals? Um, I would say the atheist goal is to turn everyone into atheists, wouldn't it be? I'm really glad right? you, we asked that That's first ultimate. because now I can tell you no. The atheism and atheists as a position, as a group... While you have, will have groups of atheists with goals, that within that group they have a common goal, it isn't their atheism that is pushing it. And, and no, the, the, it isn't. To be an atheist does not mean to adopt the goal of turning everyone into an atheist. And this is where... I have that goal. I have that as a goal. I would love to see a world that abandons religion unless religion meets its burden of proof. But it's not even my primary goal. My primary goals are to increase the understanding of what atheism is, to increase atheist normalcy, um, to overcome and combat religious privilege. But See, I, I when, you even... say, when you say the hateful rhetoric of m most atheists, who are you talking about and what's hateful rhetoric? Do we have like an example? Oh, absolutely. Everywhere I go, atheists just try, you know, they, are accused, they accuse theists of, you know, trying to rule the world or whatever, but that's the exact sort of thing that they try and impose on others, you know, they try and I, I, I'm sorry, Haley. to um, sort of believe in what they believe I, in. I, I, I'm sorry, Haley, but when you say everywhere you go, atheists are accusing you of trying to control the world when that's what atheists do. Jimmy and I both just said that neither one of us are, are in trying to necessarily convert everybody, although I'd be happy if that happened. We're not here to try to control the world, but you specifically talked about hateful rhetoric, and I asked for examples. Mm hmm Exactly. So do I you think. have an example? No, 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 don't do it exactly. I asked for examples of hateful rhetoric. I'm waiting for an example of hateful rhetoric. Um, if you go, if, like, I own a, I used to own a forum, and there'd be people who would come in, just atheist trolls, and it'd be like, die, you bastard. They'd be like, all this hateful stuff, you know? And it's that same type of atheist that, is most common and most you know do you get what i'm saying no no I, I i don't so when, so i spend my day you can go check my twitter feed and other things um constantly mm. being shit talked and trash talked um i don't know whether they're atheists or theists I, it seems that it's happened from both of them 
But if you run an internet forum and people come in and shit talk you and claim they're atheists, that has nothing to do with atheism or the atheist movement or the atheist community or anything. If you'd like, here, I'll do you a favor. Hello, everyone. Anyone who goes into a forum anywhere and says, die, you bastard, you're a piece of shit. You are human refuse. You are either trolling or you are beyond disgusting. That doesn't represent atheism or secular humanism well, and you shouldn't be doing it. What I want to know, Haley, is um, I not I have zero interest in anonymous trolls shit-talking each other on a forum. I'm saying... Do you have examples of, let's say, atheist activists who are actually out here trying to do stuff engaged in the hateful rhetoric that you find objectionable? That's what I care about. Uh, yes, actually. My... Cool. Um, my... Oh, huh? I said, said cool. Like, oh, yeah, my old roommate has like a whole project deconversion who's trying to forcefully deconvert every theist she meets and has like a whole YouTube Force, channel that forcefully, to and everything. So, so, so when I ask for when I ask for an example, you have an ex roommate who's trying to forcefully deconvert people. Who how do you forcefully deconvert someone? Well what well, Haley said, by by your roommate's YouTube channel. Isn't that what you just said? Yeah. How do you forcefully deconvert somebody with a resource they have to come to? She's starting with the YouTuber, but then she, as a YouTuber, but then she wants to move into, like, you know, she says she wants to travel the world and, you know, and give speeches, conversion and stuff like that. Haley, okay, yeah. here's the thing. I I, I, don't, I don't believe Haley at all. Right, I, so I do believe Haley, but wait, I, wait, wait, wait. no, no, I no, you can look her up. You can look Haley, her up. Haley, Haley. I, I don't I don't yeah. need to look her up. What I don't believe is that you are a person who is engaging anything in good faith. I It sounds like, just listening to your reasoning, you have some of the most shallow points I've ever heard, so I'm going to run through a couple of them with you, but I worry about taking this on too long because I feel like this call on the other side would look like we are playing with our food, honestly. It would look douchey to take this too long. I, uh, it's not possible no, 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 forcefully I, deacon. For, hang on. Jimmy has something to say, and I just want to insert real quick. It's not possible to forcefully deconvert someone, and that also isn't hateful rhetoric, which is what you called in to talk about. But Jimmy has specifics. Yeah. So the, and and Matt just hit a couple of them. Starting uh, uh, more toward the beginning of your call, where your expression of most atheists are like this are based on you had a forum that was pro something, and you associate everybody who came in with anti something must represent some movement at large. Uh, I don't actually adopt that making most people atheist is my goal. What I would say is making most people skeptics is my goal, and I have the expectation that that will result in most people becoming atheists. As far as your whole forceful deconversion thing, it's like when people call this show and accuse us of trying to force anything on anybody, and you had to call us. Haley, if right now I talk to you about your belief that you called in, you called into our show, am I forcefully trying to deconvert you? No. Exactly. So if your friend has a YouTube channel that other people have to go to to consume, is your friend forcefully mm -hmm. deconverting someone? Not, not with that particular action. No. What did and they do that was hateful? What is the what is an example of a forceful action to try and force somebody mm -hmm. to deconvert? And then if you're going to say most atheists are doing it, what is your backup for that statement? But first start with what is a forceful action to try and force someone to deconvert? Um well, that that specific roommate did or just... No, anybody. You said most general. atheists are doing it. So what are most atheists doing as a forceful act to try and force people to deconvert? Mm -hmm. Well, I can concede that it's not most atheists. Okay, what are a large say, portion of atheists doing that are a forceful act to make people deconvert? Uh, I'd say... Just that sort of, I don't want to say proselytizing, 
just <laughs> a sort of. Yes, you so wouldn't I want know, to use I that religious that term that that would be so poorly put here. So go ahead. Tell me what know, most are doing to forcefully deconvert people. Um, just the same thing that you guys sort of. Uh, oh, well, I don't. I'm not you guys particularly, but want to accuse theists of doing of going around and sort of preaching atheism online. Hey, give me an example like of an atheist preaching. What's a way? Give me a statement an atheist preacher would say. I'm sitting right here. I mean, you hear them say things like. So just hateful things about religion. Like, like what? Oh, you relied on... Wait, 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 wait. You relied on, you relied on God to, to heal you? That's what you get if they die and stuff like that? Yeah. You and, are, oh, Haley, so you are full of shit. I don't know whether yep. you're serious or if you don't, aren't an effective thinker. I don't know which way to put it. You are talking about a wait, group wait. of the... No, shut up, Haley. You are talking about a group of extreme oh. people at best... You are talking about people like pretending Twitter is real life and going, these people who are loud assholes represent the mm. majority. So let me tell you what, Haley, you're a theist. You know what loud assholes I see? The people who say I deserve to die for being a queer and I deserve to die for not being a believer. Haley, why do you support them? Why are you a part of that group? Why are you a part of this extreme forcing of my belief? Or do you suddenly understand why that's a bullshit argument to make? Uh, I mean, it's not really a bullshit argument, I feel. Oh, so you are, you are a part of, of that group. You, know that you are a part of that group. You're not doing enough to stop the theists from trying to make me die for being a queer. That's what you're agreeing to, right? Right? Oh, I'm trying very hard. I'm an activist against mm -hmm. that. I'm, I'm part of a LGBT. I'm sorry. It's the loudest. I it's say, the loudest bit of I them. I, they're are, the I majority because they're so loud. Haley, are you even for real or is this some bullshit trolling? What are you? I'm trying to have a genuine conversation with you guys. You haven't made a genuine point so far. We've asked you for an, a single example of trying to mm -hmm. force somebody to deconvert. And by the way, even if mm -hmm. I did say, if you relied on healing instead of medicine, you deserve to die. That isn't attempting to force mm -hmm. someone to deconvert, though I would never say that. So what's an example of forceful deconversion? We ever going to get mm -hmm. one? All right. So let, let me walk, walk it back a little bit. Okay? Yeah, I, you probably have to walk it all the way back so, to the beginning and go with your actual position, which your actual position is, hey, I wish atheists would shut up. I wish they would stop trying to take faith away from people. And I'd like to broad stroke brush every atheist with the loudest shitty people who do this shit on Twitter. And I'd like to uh, uh, say that you existing and trying to be an activist is trying to force your way on other people. And you probably want to go all the way mm -hmm. back to the beginning and completely redo the whole thing. Because so far, everything you've said has been bullshit. No, see... The point I'm trying to make is, Bad. Uh, is this basically, mm -hmm. is there a God? No. No one knows, but you shouldn't hate me for what I choose to believe in, and I shouldn't hate you for who what do you Haley? think? Who do you think disagrees with that, Haley? Yes. Who do you think disagrees hey. with that? Do you think Matt or I I'd do? I'd say a lot of my, I'd say a lot of my Christian comrades disagree with that, but that there's a large subsection of atheists that disagree with that as well. And that that goes no, on. It, no, uh, no, no. Here's the thing. By your own admission, which, which by the way, I don't agree with you. You say, is there a God? Nobody knows. I don't know how you know that nobody knows, but your admission that you think nobody knows means that you aren't a believer that you, you do. You know, okay. If we want to parse out belief or knowledge, but the notion that you think people hate you, uh, because you're a believer, is some absolute bullshit that is derived from the victimhood mentality that exists in the New Testament and is propagated across evangelicals. I'm a former fundamentalist Christian. I'm a former Southern Baptist who was going to be a preacher. I don't hate my former self. I don't hate you because you're a Christian. I don't hate Christians generally, and that's not what atheism is about. 
What, what I do despise is irrational buffoons who run around believing things that they don't have any warrant for and then legislating, voting, and attempting to push those beliefs onto everybody else to make them conform to a religion that they don't adhere to. That, those actions are the things that I despise. I love individual people on most occasions and the reason i spend time trying to tell people and, and explain to people that their beliefs are nonsense is because i would like them to be freed from the baggage and slavery of a religious mindset just like i was so whoever it is mm -hmm. that you're upset about whichever online atheists um you haven't given me anything concrete uh, about about anything except that you believe in a god and don't think that there's any way to justify that belief well then i'm going to say to you mm -hmm. why do you believe in something that you cannot justify why should anybody respect um, a belief that, that isn't justified mm -hmm. i'd say um it is justified because in my it's okay if you had different experiences or anyone listening has had different experiences, but thanks to the hope and stuff that I've received from God, I'm still standing. And how do you know? How do you know that? Going. How do you know that whatever hope you think you have came from God? How do you know that? Um, wait, what do you mean? Yeah, I, I think we're fundamentally I mean? getting like, to the problem. This, yeah. So this is you. My my okay. objection is that you believe something which you admit you don't have justification for, and then when I pointed it out, you said you do have justification because of the hope you've received from God. Now, what hope have you received, mm -hmm. and how do you know that it's from God? Um, I I don't. I can't give you an exact, specific, like scientific. Like I did psychosocial analysis. Haley, Haley, um, I didn't. Please stop trying yeah. to invent bullshit. I asked you, how do you know that whatever hope you think you have has come from God? What? I didn't ask for scientific anything. I asked you. You are the person who said nobody knows if there's a God or not. And you are also the person who followed that up by saying you think you're justified because of the hope you've received from God. I then asked, how do you know that this hope mm -hmm. came from God? That's it. Just tell me. How do you know? Um, it's sort of, it's, see, the thing is, it's hard to quantify. I would say I'm not asking you to quantify. I swear I'm going to hang up on what? you if you don't even make an attempt to address this. You are convinced that you have hope from God. All I'm mm -hmm. saying is what convinced you that you have hope from God? Yes, I was getting to that. I'm saying it's more than a feeling. It's something that I've been taught. Prayer is something that's taught and built on just like science, and prayer has worked for me. Oh, my God, just like science. Wow. Oh. Um, no, no, I'm sorry, but that's not people... justification, and and you don't, you don't teach and build on prayer, and you can't say prayer has worked for you. In what way has prayer worked for you? Um, I say I'll like if I pray for something, it makes my mental state better. Does that make sense? No. And I can feel that that is no. It, what what, what makes sense? What makes sense is that any time, like if if you're having a problem and you say, "Please, God, help me with this problem." Yes, I can understand. If you already believe there is a God who can help you, that will make your mental state better because you're no longer worried about a problem. You've turned that problem over to God. But that doesn't mean that God has done anything or can do anything. Let me when, you say, when you say prayer has worked for you, um, do you have any, dem any way to point to a prayer that has worked in such a way that we can verify it's from a God? Um... Yes, I would, although it's not as simple as, and clean as a lot of atheists want to believe. 
I'd you know, I swear to your kind of fucking God that if you pull this, a lot of atheists want shit again. When you're talking to me, we're done. I asked you the question. I don't care what oh, other atheists okay, want. Okay, okay, you're right, the one right. that is advocating. You shut up. You're the one that's advocating for a belief. I have repeatedly, respectfully asked you to, to demonstrate why you're convinced I don't need the dancing around. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to whine about what other atheists want or how it may not be good enough. All that is is an admission that you're about to talk some smash. So what's the um, reason? I just remember, like, all those nights alone as a kid, and I just felt so alone and isolated and i see i know what you're gonna say i know you're gonna Stop. say you, you're doing the wrong thing he's gonna he's gonna get mad again you're literally trying to straw man uh, and preempt I, just answer the question and don't tell us what we're gonna say just answer mm -hmm. uh the short answer is i feel that what i pray for eventually comes true Sorry, I got a little tongue tied there. I, I, I'd like to take this. Like, uh, Haley. If I ask Haley, for something. Haley, stop. stop so I already heard you. You say if you ask for something, it comes true. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. When mm -hmm. I was a teenager, this happened, I'm not kidding, dozens, maybe hundreds of times. I would be, so it's, it's going to get a little bit weird here because we're going to be talking about the bathroom. But I have intestinal issues, and I have since I was a kid. And they cause a lot of pain. And as a teenager, because I didn't know how to manage them, we're talking extreme levels of pain, bowled over the first couple of times, thought I had to go to the hospital, and then you learn, nope, you just, you just have that amount of pain. And what I used to do is when I would get to a certain point, I would realize this is too much and I cannot handle more. And I would basically call out to God and I would pray that he would take the pain away from me. And about a minute to a two minutes later, I would stop being in pain. The pain would subside basically completely. And that happened to me, again, could be hundreds of times, at least dozens of times. Is that proof that the prayer was working and God was healing me? I mean... It sounds like it in your I world, right? I can't think of any... I mean... Uh, okay, great. You can't think of another explanation. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to tell you the explanation, and this is going to show fundamentally why you are not doing enough to investigate your own beliefs, because I no longer believe. I no longer pray. What I found out was that moment of extreme pain that I couldn't handle more of, I actually literally couldn't handle more of. It was the peak of my pain, and my body would hit that moment, and it would basically go, okay, this is the worst of it. We're past it. We're done. And it would do it by itself. And the funniest thing happened. When I stopped praying, I still hit these moments where I would go, oh, goodness, this is where I would usually pray. But I wouldn't pray. Or just to be funny, I'd ask the magic genie in the sky to handle it for me instead of God. And you know what happened? One to two minutes later, my pain still went away because I had developed a habit and a pattern of this natural relief that I was receiving using something called confirmation bias to attribute that to a God. And that is what you have been doing too. When you said it's prayer, it's like science, you build on it and it works more. Science doesn't work on confirmation bias. You were describing confirmation bias when you were talking about why prayer works. So I think that there isn't much hope here in the conversation going at much more useful places. I'm not going to just end it. Of course, you and Matt can talk more. But until you go and look up confirmation bias and look up examples of how people use it and then go, okay, now that I know this fallacious thing my brain does, this thing that is har apparently hardwired, that humans have this thing that they can't escape almost unless they learn about it and put work into avoiding it, let me apply that to my own life and see if I can see anywhere that this may have happened. I don't know how we could have a useful conversation with you until that happens. However, I'm done with you now. If you and Matt want to keep talking, feel free.
Okay. Yeah, it's nine in the afternoon where I am, so I might have to go soon, actually. Um, nine in the you afternoon. Want to say anything, Matt? The eyes are the size and the yeah. no. I just, I genuinely hope. I mean, whatever harassment you think you're getting uh, from atheists, I hope that stops. But honestly, it's very difficult to take any of this too seriously when you you don't have anything that's like close to a concrete example, nothing that points to anything substantive. Um, and then when we start talking about how and why you believe, it's like, okay, you believe for the same reason that a lot of other people do, because this is what you're surrounded by. This is what around the people around you believe. You were taught prayer. You were taught that it works this way. And Jimmy's example is great for pointing out, you know, hey, the way we go about interpreting what happens, like when I'm in a, a struggling and I reach out flailingly, Next time, you know, next time you want to pray, pray to Joe Pesci and see if it works out exactly the same way. Um, you know, I mean, I get it. You you think that's sacrilegious, but I really hope that you take on board this notion that you simultaneously believe no one. What? I just said it's unholy. Okay, uh, who cares what's holy or not? Your your notion of holy comes from a, a a belief in a god that you can't demonstrate. And that we have no good reason to exist. Your, do you realize that your belief in that God is unholy with regard to somebody else's religion and their God? Um, you can you can make that argument. I, I did. I asked if you realized it. It wasn't an argument. It's a fucking fact. It, what is unholy? Being being a Hindu and worshiping Hindu gods is unholy to from the Christian perspective. And the Christian perspective is unholy from the Jewish perspective or the Muslim expectation, uh, perspective. That's just the way this works. And so if your view is that nobody can know if there's a God, then how do you know which one of those is right? You have arbitrarily decided on the one you think is right. You don't have any evidence for it. You don't have any reason for it. Why, why are you a Christian and not a Muslim? Um, because... I've tried all the other ones. You tried what all the on. others. They haven't had the same. I, I genuinely, okay, now we're just going to stop here because it's getting embarrassing. Um, I, I, we I gave you homework. I don't believe Wait. it. Go do the homework and call yeah. back maybe. Can I like leave you guys with like a quote? No. Bye. No. I feel like it will make us worse. <laughs> I think it'll make us worse. Um, oh, I've tried them all. There's not enough time <laughs> in all. life to try them all. Yeah, okay. When you say you've tried them all, I bet you couldn't even name them all. I do give Haley a pass on nine in the afternoon. Maybe Haley is a fan of Panic at the Disco. It's that's nine fair. in the afternoon. Your eyes are the size of the moon. It's a song. I assume that's where the phrase I'm came aware from. of this song. Yeah, it's a beautiful I, song. I know, I know the words and everything. Quick reminder that if you send a uh, super chat, we don't read them out at the end, but I have been putting them down in the Chiron at the bottom. Looks a little something like that. So just for people who have been sending them, want to make sure expectations are set. That's where they show up on the show because we're more limited on time than others. Anyway, I'm ready. Yeah, speaking of limited on time, we've got Serene, who's in kind of a hurry, who's a theist, uh, pronouns of she, her, wants to argue for the existence of a generic God. Let's not waste any time. Go, Serene. Hi. Um, I'm actually agnostic theist, which means like I kind of, I, I used to, I used to be a Christian, but um, a lot of the stuff in the Bible I don't really agree with anymore, but I kind of feel like um, there may be a God out there. I'm not sure. It could be. Honestly, I think it could be due to like some sort of sunk cost. Serene, let's just do your argument as quick like, as possible then. Here's why I think there may be, because otherwise if you're just saying, I'm agnostic, I don't really know, da, 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 there's, no, there's no value to this conversation otherwise. So just give us your why you think there might be, and we'll talk about that. Um, I think there could be because um, everything, you know, has a start to it. And I think that, like, maybe someone could have made this wor world. Like, it doesn't make, I don't know, it doesn't fully make sense to me that, like, we came out of nothing, I guess. I don't know, like I said, if that's just due to sun costs or just, like, maybe, like, a logical thought. But I just want to know your, your thoughts on that. You want it or me? I'm happy to Go either way. 
Uh, Serene, what do you think nothing is? I'm just going to start there and we'll do it very quick. Uh, vacancy. Uh, just the absence of, of anything? Yeah. So you should know that current physics models don't suggest that that is what nothing actually is. And in fact, we don't know how everything started. And by the way, we also don't know if this whole everything had a cause applies to the universe itself. That's a quality of the universe once you're in it. We don't know whether it's a quality of it if you're out of it or if out of it is a thing. And so what people like Matt and I are saying is with all of these I don't knows, if we're going to go with, well, yeah. it could have been, what couldn't have been? If we're going to go with, I, I, and by the way, you say you're an agnostic theist, which means you've accepted the belief to some degree, but you just recognize that you don't actually know if it's true. So are you agnostic about the possibility that I'm actually a time traveler and maybe I go back to the beginning of the universe and start the universe? Is that, is that possible? Or are you, a, are you an agnostic believer in that proposition? That you may have started the universe? Yeah, me personally. The... Me personally. I'm going to time uh, travel to the beginning of the universe to start it. I mean, I, I don't think time travel is possible. Oh, why? But, but so you're not a believer in a don't know. You have a don't know proposition. You don't have a better reason to suspect that God exists than that time travel doesn't. So why would you call yourself an agnostic theist, but you're not agnostic about the proposition of a time traveling creator? Am I, am I, are you suggesting that I'm like identifying wrong? Like, I don't understand the, I nobody identifying as an agnostic atheist or something. I think to say that you are an agnostic theist is to say, I'm coming down on the side that I think it probably was a God. Whereas you have two agnostic yeah. atheists here. Well, I, I won't give Matt mm -hmm. my labels, but I think that's what he uses. You have two, you have me, an agnostic atheist here who says, of course, I'm not going to say anything didn't happen, but I have no reason to yeah. believe it was a God or even I don't have a reason to a good reason to say, let's leave God on the list of examples that we should be testing mm -hmm. out. Let's let's put this thing that is totally unscientific when every other gap that closes that we don't put God into has been closing through the scientific method. Let's go ahead and hold God to fill that gap in case we never get that one. I don't have a good reason to start with God. And it sounds like you think you might. Okay. So like, I have a question. Do you think that it's like cognitively dangerous to think that there could be an existence of God or. Do I think it's cognitively dis? <sighs> It's a complex question with a complex answer. I think that the utility of God as it's been, as humanity has faced it, has mostly been a net negative for the species. So I could make the argument both ways. Okay, that makes sense. I, I think that, I personally think that like uh, uh, living your life kind of based off of the organized religious aspect, I think it could be dangerous because um, I know it could take away um, like individual thought processes and, and the such, uh, I mean, and the like, but, um, but Serene, why is I it guess... important to you to maintain agnostic theism for a God, but not for me time traveling? Cause I think you're trying to say that you're not as attached to it as I think you are. And yet you aren't willing to take the same agnostic time traveling position as you are with agnostic theism. So why is it important to you to be an agnostic theist, but you don't feel the same pull to be an agnostic Jimmy's the time traveling creator. Maybe because I've been exposed to more things that relate to God than I have been that that made sense in the past to me that than I have been relate um, exposed to information about tr time travel. So would you say um, that I th sense. I I think I'll tell you what I think it is, and I think that you started to say it and then you sort of changed. Uh, I think you yeah. are trying to fit in with a religious world and you find it easier to tell people you're a theist who's agnostic than you do saying, hey, by the way, no one has a good reason to believe this. Because while you might have been exposed yeah. to more people who believe in God, you weren't exposed to more actual positive reasoning for a God than you have been exposed to more actual positive reasoning for me being a time traveler. In fact, I can do that with entirely naturalistic explanations. I don't need to appeal to the supernatural once. Some of them won't pan out. It'll be relied on. It'll be mostly science fiction, mm -hmm. but I can make it sound real. 
Yeah. I, I will address that makes one sense. point where, where you were, Serene, you were basically asking, you know, do you think it's, you know, cognitively harmful um, to, to leave room open for ideas like that? No, it's not cognitively harmful to leave room open for the possibility of something um, in the vaguest sense. But whatever mechanism, mm -hmm. whatever heuristics, whatever data in your head leads you to conclude that X is possible is problematic if it turns out that X is not possible. For example, if pick any God or similar proposition. I, both possibility and impossibility would need to be demonstrated. If I reach the conclusion that it's possible or that it's impossible, absent warrant, then that means I've reached a conclusion, absent warrant. And if another thing comes along where we're trying to evaluate, you know, its possibility or impossibility, um, it's likely that I'm then going to get it wrong or more likely that I'll get it wrong. Does that make sense? Uh, not really. I'm sorry. I didn't really understand. Okay. Well, all right. So let's say I believe that something is possible and it turns yeah. out it's actually impossible. Whatever led me to okay. believe that God, God is possible, what mm -hmm. that's, I might use the, the same information and that same heuristic to evaluate whether or not fairies are possible or dragons are possible or whether or not mm -hmm. vaccines cause autism or whatever, you know, whether or not it's safe to cross the street, probably not the latter two, but it, it, you, you don't really know. If you have, if you reach a conclusion and the method by which you reach that conclusion is flawed and that can be used to reach other yeah. conclusions, then danger is possible. Makes sense. I see. Serena, I, I think oh, I want to end, end on this. I know you're in a hurry and I want to hit some of these other calls. We've got an hour left and great calls lining up. I think I want to end on this. Serene, uh, to the statement, I believe a God exists, would you respond yes or no? I being you, not me. Uh, a God, yes. You believe a God exists? Could exist. No, 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 no. <laughs> not could exist. <laughs> Does exist. I believe... A God I am convinced exists. some sure. God exists. It doesn't to yeah, say no to say no doesn't Here, let mean me, you let me make close this really the possibility. Easy for you, let me make this really easy for you, yeah. Serene. The number of blades of grass on the planet is definitely either even or odd, right? Do you, are you convinced that the number of blades of grass on the planet is even? No. Does that mean that you're convinced that it's odd? No, it just means that I don't think it's even. Right. It doesn't have to be You got even. it perfect. So this, Jimmy's doing the same thing. Are you convinced? Okay. So a, a God either exists or it doesn't exist. Those are the only options. And Jimmy's saying, are you convinced that a God exists? No. No, so, and nothing is problematic about that because you're also, are you convinced that a God doesn't exist? No. See? And the world didn't end with that acknowledgement and nobody came uh, to haul you away or torture you. You're basically saying, I am not yet convinced of either the proposition that a God exists or the proposition that a God doesn't exist. And that's fine. It's when you become convinced that this becomes a problem. Basically, Serene, the reason why I wanted to do that exercise with you is you identified as an agnostic theist. And generally, mm -hmm. an agnostic theist is a person who says, I am convinced that a God exists, but I don't know it for a fact. An agnostic atheist okay. generally says, I don't hold a belief in a God, but I don't know that there isn't a God. And you actually, on okay. that scale, fall more on the agnostic atheist side. So I'd, rec I'd recommend, if these terms matter to you, 
To me, terms don't. Yeah. I want terms to describe me. But if somebody says, you're an agnostic atheist, so now let me tell you what you believe, those people can very much go fuck themselves. And so I'm trying to avoid <laughs> doing that to you. I'm trying to not go, okay. Serene, you're an agnostic atheist, so let me tell you what that means for you. I want you to know yeah. that usually agnostic atheist is more what you're describing than agnostic theist. And I would suggest you go okay. and look at these terms and see which one describes you better. At the end of the day, though, All right. Thank you so the much. terms are mm -hmm. never as important as what they are describing. Yep. And as long as you become comfortable with who you are and how, what you believe about things, um, it's all good. You, nobody has to label themselves. Labels often get in the way. I, I, I've spent 18 plus years and on doing call-in shows, and I've argued with both theists and atheists about whether or not the label that I choose for myself actually fits. And yeah. at the end of the day, um, I, I think it does. And I hope that you find, I hope that you either find the label that fits with you or you decide, I don't need a fucking label. I am, I'm not telling people how to live. I'm not, I'm not convinced of what I believe. I'm open to learning things. I'll, I'll be convinced of anything provided there's enough evidence for it. I'm going to keep an open mind, but not so open that my brains fall out, that kind of thing. Uh, you'll be fine. I agree. All right. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for the clarification and uh, challenging my, uh, my thought process. Thank really you, Serene. And by the way, I'm sorry if at the beginning of the call I was too short and curt right off the bat. I don't think I was over no. Haley. I should have taken a breath. Uh, but thank you, Serene. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. No, I, I understand. It's fine. Thank have a you. good day. Bye. Bye. I am capable of that. I really do just need to take a deep breath. We have lots of lines full up, uh, and so I think we're just going to try and hit all of them before the show is over. Uh, oh, and I think we just lost at least one. So I am going to open at least, we've got two theists and two atheists on the line at the moment. I'm going to open at least one line for theist calls, but basically for the remainder of the show, uh, it will only be, um, it will only be the new theist calls uh, besides the existing atheists who are waiting. Anyway, you, you're welcome to pick whichever one you want to go with next. Um, well, let, let's, Alex has been on there for the longest. So Alex in Ohio, pronouns are he him, um, wants to argue that UFO sightings are evidence for Christianity. So awesome. Uh, yeah. Welcome, Alex. UFO sightings are uh, evidence for Christianity specifically because top, all, virtually all of the top brass of the most powerful militaries in the world identify as Christian. And if UFOs exist, then at least some of them would have to know about it. And if they did know about it, then um, atheists or agnostic or something, when they get, have their mind blown, their minds blown to that extent. And um, I'm so, but apparently that doesn't Alex? happen. Alex? Yeah? UFO, UFO stands for what? Unidentified flying objects. So if it's unidentified... How can it be confirmation of anything? Right. Well, I'm pretty much uh, an agnostic Christian. I used to be an atheist. I, was, I actually remember that, that arguing absolute, with... That, no, no, no. No, 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 Alex. That has absolutely nothing to do with the question that I asked you. I asked if it's unidentified, how can it be evidence for anything? Um. I understand that it's more of a quantity over quality argument, and I don't claim to be able to physically prove the validity. Uh, no, no, of sir. Of no sir, Alex, I'm going to give you one fight that strike two. I, I'm going to I'm going to come up with a graphic here that goes strike one, strike two. The question was, if it is unidentified, how can it be evidence for anything? Last chance. Because it does things that are apparently physically impossible if we take the witnesses Goodbye. at face value. Goodbye. I, I, so me jumping in was to say like, hey, bud, you're about to get a threat of being hung up on. Let me give you a little advice here. <laughs> Just yeah. answer the question being asked because uh, this ain't it, fam. Yeah. So the thing is, if it's unidentified, then it isn't evidence for anything. But Alex right. doesn't get that because Alex in his head equates 
unidentified flying object. You heard him. Oh, it does things that can't be done by physics. No, there's never been a demonstration that any of the unidentified objects are actually violating physics. That's just not the case. Yeah. You just don't have enough information to reach any conclusion. But Alex's argument is most of the top brass in the military are Christian. And if they found out that there was a UFO for real, then this would shake their Christianity to the core or something. I don't know how. And, and the, the fact that they haven't said so means that it supports Christianity. It's really wild. It doesn't uh, even pan am, out. No, I am bored to tears by the notion that uh, something I don't, we're going back to Blackadder again. So what you're telling me is something you've never seen is slightly less blue than something else you've never seen. Right. Uh, but I, I even just try to make the conspiracy work. And you're like, okay, so what you're saying is the top brass have found these UFOs. And first of all, you're making a presumption that they have identified them uh, uh, because there is, it makes no sense that they're UFOs if their faith could have been shaken by it. And that the grand conspiracy to keep what these UFOs are a secret does not include, by the way, you can't all suddenly stop living your life. Like this thing that came out, it actually, it turns out to be who Jesus actually was. He's like, I'm not Jesus. I'm an Andalite, uh, uh, which is a type of alien. Uh, uh, and, and I can shape shift. And anyway, all this stuff and, and the whole thing's bullshit. But we got to keep this under wraps. As though that ginormous conspiracy wouldn't include, so go live your lives as though it were normal. I can't, as a conspiracy, make it work. And again, it come it, it relies first upon accepting that the unidentified flying objects aren't actually unidentified, and that you think you know what they are, which is a, just a, a level of arrogance that I'm incapable of. And everyone who knows has watched this channel knows I'm capable of tremendous arrogance, and yet I can't get there. Wild. It, uh, it's strange to me. I mean, I, I think we should be getting like thank you cards from Christians because. When someone calls in with a UFOs prove Christianity type of call and we don't milk it for 20 minutes worth of clips, which I suppose we should probably do, um, <laughs> if we don't milk that for 20 minutes worth of clips to, to turn a profit and continue making Christianity look as absurd as it can, as we possibly can, um, we should be getting a thank you card for not doing that, that we yeah. at least try to take people who are within at least partly within the realm of reality in in their case uh, for theism and Christianity in particular. But I'm going to do you one better because uh, Jose here in Texas, pronouns he or him, is on the line, is an atheist who wants to talk about how the Kalam cosmological argument is the best argument for religion. So welcome, Jose. Um, hello, it's good to be here. Uh, so my point is uh, I've been an atheist for about a year, and I really do think that the Kalam cosmological argument is uh, the best argument just based on the fact that it's so hard to disprove logically. The, the best argument uh, for, for what? For a god, not for a, a specific god, but for okay. Okay. there is a god. But Let's go through the Kalam cosmological argument real quickly for those who aren't aware. Premise one is what? All right. Premise one is uh, there is a thing that exists, correct? No. That's not the first premise of the Kalam. Am I getting the argument wrong? Because isn't it... Um, correct. You are getting the argument wrong. I, I'll just help you. I'll just help you here. Here's the Kalam cosmological argument. Premise one, everything that begins to exist has a cause for its existence. Premise two, mm -hmm. the universe began to exist. Conclusion, therefore the universe has a cause for its existence. The conclusion does not mention God, so the Kalam cosmological argument is not an argument for the existence of God. It is an argument for mm -hmm. there must be a cause, and then people add on to the Kalam to do other things. So... You called in to say that you think the Kalam Cosmological Argument is the best argument for God when it's not an argument for God, and you said it's so yeah. difficult to refute 
when you don't need to refute it, but also the first premise, everything that begins to exist has a cause for its existence, hasn't been demonstrated. Correct. It can't be right now. Right. And the second premise, mm -hmm. that the universe began to exist, may or may not be true. It may not have began to exist. It may have always existed in some form, somewhere. So premise one and premise two, neither are demonstrably true. The conclusion has nothing to do with God. So how can the Kalam... Now, don't get me wrong. The Kalam cosmological argument may in fact be the best argument for a god, and yet it's not an argument for a god. It's not demonstrably true. And so really what you're saying is that all arguments for god are so fucking bad that the Kalam wins by default, even though it's not an argument for god. Uh, in an essence, yes. That is what I was thinking uh, the conclusion was going to be. I really do think arguments for religion are pretty bad. And that's why I do think the Kalam is the best argument, even though it's not arguing for a god. But I had never actually heard the it defined as not arguing for a god, because every time I hear it, people are like, oh, that means God must have created it. So I guess that's where the disconnect was. Yeah, I, I don't want to be... I don't want to be mean. we got a couple other callers. In the future, before you call in to decide that an argument is the best one... It might help if you knew what it was. Yeah, that'll help. Jose, also, yeah. the thing that I think that you probably fell for here and a lot of people fall for it is there is a constant appeal to quote-unquote common sense arguments. Sometimes they don't actually call them that. They just go, because it's common sense. And grand, uh, mm -hmm. uh, tremendous concepts don't need to be explainable by common sense because the only way the Kalam is, the only way the Kalam works is if you remove everything but common sense and you just go with the idea of like well my airpods began to exist and everything i can think of begins to exist and that you're totally unaware of certain concepts of quantum physics that may or may not be correct but suggest things spontaneously popping into existence and out it, it's the idea that these this thing that anybody from earl to stephen hawking to, and I'm sorry to everybody named Earl that I just used your name as a pejorative for a stupid person. If it makes you feel better, I'm thinking of a specific Earl. Uh, but everyone from Earl to Stephen Hawking uh, uh, should be able to grasp is a very, very silly one. Don't fall for that shit. Yeah. All right. Okay. Tight. And um, also, uh, as a side note, uh, this has nothing to do with the argument. Mm -hmm. But um, cool. in another video I was watching, uh, you were talking with, uh, Jimmy was talking with Aaron Ra um, Aaron. about determinism. Mm -hmm. Aaron, yes, sorry, Aaron, um, about determinism. And um, really, the best way I come up with an explanation for determinism is uh, thinking of a, a chemical reaction that took place when the Big Bang started that is still taking place and kind of has to keep going through. There were no if chemical reactions with, when the Big Bang started. There's yeah. no chemistry at no, that no, point. I, like, uh, it's just like a uh, a way of rationalizing determinism for me. If that kind of makes sense. No, get a better rationalization uh, no, for no. yourself. <laughs> rationalizations right, aren't a good so, thing. Yeah. Rationalizations are what when we try to convince ourselves of something that's unwarranted. That's a rationalization. So, maybe, right. maybe you meant an analogy or whatever else, but there weren't chemical reactions at the when the Big Bang happened. Yeah. No, then I think I, I did mean an analogy. Like, uh, you start a reaction, you have to end a reaction. So if you are a determinist and you believe if you start everything the same way, it's going to end the same way, correct? Like, if you start a reaction the same way? If you want the easier the way to explain way. it, all, all I just say is if you, rewound, if you rewind time by any amount of time, everything's going to happen the exact same way that it happened before. And then you'd be caught in a loop because if everything happens the exact same way, the time's going to keep getting rewound and the universe infinitely does the same loop over and over and over again. But that's, that's just more for you. fun. Yeah. Perhaps. All right, cool. Yeah. That was all I had to talk about then. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Jose. Yeah, take care. Bye. We got, uh, we got a few callers left. We got lines open as well for, for theist. Um, I wonder if you want to go through right right before um, right before we take Isaac uh, and run through the upcoming shows and stuff here on the line because I know I know you guys tune in. It's the Sunday show. It's me and Jimmy. 
uh, you know, we're blah, 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 blah. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff going on the line and soon to be the line X. So you want to give them the rundown? Yeah. Uh, I'm pulling up the, the old roster. Uh, and one announcement that I, I'll make this announcement for later in the month, because I know a lot of people were requesting it. We do have professor Dave, AKA Dave Farina joining R and raw on skep talk on March 13th. So there you go. You requested it. You didn't stop requesting it. Really, you wouldn't leave me alone about it. So now it's happening. Uh, but this week, coming up on the line, we have Shannon Q being met, uh, 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 joined by Dark Matter 2,525 and zero cents. Dark Matter 2525 will be uh, uh, this Monday on Skeptalk. Then I will be joined once again by sex counselor Alyssa Lubachek, who will likely be a big part of this uh, uh, this sexpectation show going forward. So I definitely want to make sure everybody is meeting her. She's amazing. Uh, then this Wednesday will be Matt Dillahunty on The Hangup. And I don't think you've confirmed a guest yet for it. We, 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 are, we are talking to a couple of people. I may end up doing it by myself um, like I did, you know, for the because I want on Friday. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. And then Maybe this, this Thursday on Transatlantic Call and Show will be Arden Hart and student Dr. Ben uh, will be this Thursday. And then other really exciting things in the week which follows, including, uh, I believe, next week on Monday, uh, Nominal Naomi will be joining Forrest Valkai on Skeptalk. So there's just lots of cool, exciting things coming up. You want to make sure you hit the subscribe button. That'll probably uh, uh, make sure that you get notifications, though. Also, maybe not, because subscribing, it turns out, doesn't actually matter that much, but it matters a ton to us. So if you'll hit that subscribe button, it supports us. It supports our ability to contact YouTube and be taken seriously. Uh, and then don't forget to go follow The Line X. There are going to be multiple episodes of Cuz I Wanna on there in the future, as well as new content launching, as well as uh, highlight clips. Some of the better clips, some of the better things, those will all be going out on The Line X. That link is in the description. And finally... Patreon.com slash call the line. Uh, I am currently working on so that we have them up in March, the end credits uh, uh, with, with patrons of certain tiers and above, but go check it out. See if you want to support. And if you do, you can join me next Sunday after the Sunday show on a zoom call where you can tell me to go fuck myself on my birthday. Uh, Ooh, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find time on your birthday just to do that. Thank you. I knew you would. He's been doing I, that gonna, since before we were friends. That's true. <laughs> uh, we've got Isaac in Texas. Pronouns are he and Isaac, welcome to the show. You wanted to talk about thought crimes. So I, I think we can talk about thought uh, crimes. Yes. Yeah. So I was in a discussion with um, a friend of mine who's a pretty devout Christian. And uh, they were talking about the having a belief that, um, well, basically Matthew 27, 28, the idea that if you think about having sex with another person, you have effectively had sex with the other person. And um, they, they said that they believed that it was equivalent to actually doing the act. And I wanted to talk to you guys about how to approach this and how to sort of deconstruct that belief, because it, it really is quite nonsensical. Okay. So first of all, it's not Matthew 27, 28. That's Matthew 5, 28. Not to be pedantic boy, but Sorry. just in case uh, yeah. somebody was trying to get past there. Um, yeah, what is I it that you want to know? Numbers. Yeah. Well, um, I kind of just want to hear your guys' argument against the idea of a thought crime. Um, that, that's really what I'm trying to, to get a wrap on. Because okay. I've done I'm some opposed... looking into it, and there doesn't seem to be much in that realm. I'm opposed to anything that comes close to thought crime legislation. The very concept of thought crime is anathema to my view on what one could be morally responsible for the practical reality is that mm -hmm. you don't have access to what's in my mind um you can't prove what my thoughts mm -hmm. are and by and large it shouldn't matter to you that said inferences about my motivations for actions and my thoughts 
are relevant and evaluated when we're like, for example, we're sentencing a criminal. If, if I, I, if I murder Jimmy because he's a terrible producer, um, that doesn't mean that I'm a danger to anyone else. It doesn't mean that there's a likelihood, there's no chance of recidivism as long as I don't have another terrible producer. Um, but, and, and so those things can be considered and say, you know what? Yeah, this guy did a terrible thing. He killed another person, um, but he's not a risk to society. On the other hand, if I murder Jimmy um, because he's tried to copy me, now I'm a risk to everyone else who might have tried to copy me. Or if I murder Jimmy because he's queer, now I'm potentially a risk to everyone else who's queer. The motivations that people take for their actions, um, that's what we can evaluate uh, in sentencing because we're trying to determine how much more of a risk this is or this individual is. Mm -hmm. um, the thought crime that is advocated for in the Bible within Christendom uh, like you're referencing with Matthew 20 or Matthew 5, 27 and 28, where you said, where it says, uh, you've heard that if you, you know, commit adultery with another woman, blah, 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 that's sin. I say, if you look at another woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her in her heart. Now, setting aside the fact that this is, um, it, it's there to teach some kind of lesson about purity of thought and encourage people to not, uh, you know, let their mind go to impure thoughts. It only matters in the sense that there's supposedly a God who can read your mind. And so that God isn't just going to mm -hmm. punish you for taking the action. He's going to punish you for wanting to take the action or thinking about taking the action. Um, and thought crimes exist throughout Christianity, not just the look at them with lust. I mean, that's the cornerstone of sin. Failure to believe, which is thought, is damnable. Um, Apostasy, the one and only um, unforgivable listed sin, is specifically attributing to the Holy Spirit something that, or attributing to something other than the Holy Spirit, that which would come from the Holy Spirit, um, you know, like a miracle or, or whatever else. And that is absolutely, I mean, yes, you're making a profession of your thought, but the thought itself is, is the sin. Um, it's silly in the real world because you don't have access to people's minds it is laughable that the, you, anybody could think there's a god who doesn't understand the basics of human psychology to the point where he's willing to punish punish you for purely natural thoughts like i i i like uh you know whatever you're attracted to if you look at someone lustfully mm -hmm. And granted, the Bible only has it if you look at a woman with lust. So I guess if you're gay uh, and you look at a man with a lust, that's not a sin. But doing something with the man would be a sin. I don't know. But thought crimes make no sense to me in the real world. Um, and in within Christianity and what the Bible is supporting, um, I cannot. I find it difficult to believe that there is a God who actually holds to those antiquated bizarre ideas of making your thoughts enough to damn you to 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 hell and by the way isaac i i would take uh, it in a completely different direction than matt took it though matt's direction was very good let's say there is zero examples of thought crimes ever leading to abuse let's say there are zero examples of it being a negative thing and things that we could point to to where it became bad with zero examples, mm -hmm. I still wouldn't believe in thought crime because you haven't actually given me a good reason to take thought crime on. So uh, when you ask us why we as atheists mm -hmm. would be against thought crime, I'm going to ask you as a skeptic, why would I be for it way before the against? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the problem, so I actually did bring that up, and the problem I ran into... Um, is just it's a conflict of beliefs and they seem to approach the whole thing as though the beliefs are uh, equally supported because neither is uh explicitly proven so um, usually in that scenario you can get them which, to acknowledge that they only support the concept of thought crime if the enforcement is happening in their religion that their religion is the enforcing power. Yeah. Because suddenly Christians aren't for thought crime if they live in a Muslim country 
or if Muslims were if yeah. Muslims were getting more political power. And so the acknowledgement that the secular yeah. basis for law is better for Christians. It is better for everybody of every religion because you can yeah. only exist happily if you are a member, a believing member, and even then happy is a is subjective, a believing member of the ruling party's religion. The, it, the logic there is very simple and very easy. You wouldn't want the enforcement of thought crime mm -hmm. unless it was your religion's thought crime. And the only way to make sure that nobody's having that yeah. imposed on them from the legal position, from the very real consequences position, uh, is to make sure that you are existing in a secular society that does not expect other people to live a religion that is not their own. Yeah. Yes. Um, if I could briefly walk you through an idea that I had and see if you guys, or see what you guys think about that. Sure, and then I'm going to ask you um, why you believe in a God, but go ahead. <laughs> sure. Um, so the approach that I was thinking about is based around the idea of consent. Um, so one of the key assertions that he brought up was that having sex in your mind is equivalent to physically having sex. And so the question of consent becomes quite pertinent because you have not asked them for consent in this. But right? they haven't justified um, the first part, right? So mm -hmm. Yeah. The notion the so notion that the idea I it isn't would we at least agree that when I'm having sex with someone in my mind, they're not there at all? I'm not actually having sex with them. I'm having sex with with just a mental construct of them. Um, sort of. Sort of. Whoa, 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 whoa! I, I, I really so the need direction to that, the direction that they took. Suggesting that if I have sex said, with precisely. someone, that if I have sex with someone in my head, they're there. I think I know what's missing here. Isaac, consent is a co question of autonomy. Do you understand that? Yes. So how do you violate the autonomy of somebody by thinking about them doing what, whatever to you? So the, the way that it, it was brought up is that... Not, um, no, 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 not the way it was brought up. How could, attractive. I, get, I get their stupid argument, but it isn't a good one. They haven't justified okay. it. So you had said you were no, giving us a thought experiment where you were, I think, trying to make it work. If you just want to acknowledge there's no way to make it work, then let's move on to why you believe in God. Well, I, I still got to get an answer to this, and I wanted sure. to finish. So Isaac, finish your thought, and we'll, we'll see if I can get an answer to my question. Go ahead. Okay. So in his case, uh, he was making the point that to recognize somebody as physically attractive, you must first have sex with them in your mind which is an absolutely absurd claim, and I'm just trying to, to point that out in a <laughs> undeniably obvious way. Asexual people um, find people physically attractive, but I don't think that your person is going to accept that asexual people <laughs> exist. So, I, again, I... No, uh, yeah, no, I, no, no, no stop. Oh, boy. Stop. Stop. I need to get this. I thought I made a statement that was crystal okay. clear, and I got a sort of. If I, in my mind, as a fantasy, have sex with someone, that person does not exist in my mind. Their consent has not been violated. They are not present in any fucking way at all. I am fantasizing about a, a, a straw version of them that exists only as a construct in my mind. Can we I at least agree, agree that. to that? What? Yeah, no, I agree with that. I have not. Then why did you say sort of? Um, I'm, then why did you see all of this rehashing because is because you. when I asked, stop talking, all of this rehashing is because when I asked you the question, you said sort of. How can it be that someone is sort of not in my fucking mind? I was just trying to recall what he said. That's all. I'm sorry. Okay. See, consent is irrelevant with the fictional beings in my head. As a matter of fact, in my head, if I lust after someone, that construct in my head has consented because I have zero interest in having non-consensual sex, even in my fantasies. But some people might.
I had there's there's nobody here. That's what I was trying to get to. Is mm -hmm. that consent cannot be an issue if I am the only person involved? Correct. Okay. Now I'm clear. I I feel like I want to yeah. I I want to clarify before comments come in because of Twitter stuff. The moment you begin to externalize yeah. this at all, it can become a problem. We are talking yes. purely to the internal. This is not yes. advocating for deep fake porn, for example, that we can list the harms for. Uh, uh, we are talking about what you do in your brain. If you never externalize it, you've never done anything. And just because you jerked off thinking about Timmy or whoever, don't then message Timmy about what you did. Keep it to your fucking yeah, leave, self. Leave Timmy alone. Yeah. Yes. I mean, part of this uh, part of this approach is just trying to lay bare the complete absurdity of what he's trying to say, which is that it's equivalent to having sex physically. That was part of his assertion. It's not equivalent. Um, it's, and it's wrong. It, is the is the I, I is the unicorn in my head equivalent to a unicorn? Are you fucking it? Uh, just kidding. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm really not trying to say that personally. Um, it's just that's a key aspect of his assertion that I'm trying to disprove. Um, does that make more sense? No. Why are you trying to disprove an assertion that hasn't been proven? It's, it is simply wrong. It is simply false to say fantasizing about having sex with someone is equivalent to actually having sex with them. That is just undeniably yeah. false. Isaac, I'm going to do something I I've mean, never done I on this show. That, but it would end the discussion. I'm going to do right. something I've never done on this show ever. And I'm going to offer you $20. And I'm, it's a legit offer. <laughs> Isaac, if you get that okay. person to call in, and I, and I can verify it's you because I can see your phone number. Nobody else can. So we could email back and forth. You can say, hey, it's really me. Here's my phone number. Here's the proof. I will give you $20 to get that guy to call in and tell it to us himself. Because I think there's yeah. a lot being caught between you trying to represent and you having a mind that works and this person not having a mind that works. So I'm going to offer you $20 cash. I wish I could offer more. But $20 if you can get this guy to call in and, and have it out with Matt and I himself. Yeah. All right. I don't know if I can do it on the same phone number. Um, no, 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 no. We're in an online class together. I get so. it. I'm not saying he that, that that person has to call in on your number. I'm saying you can email me and say, hey, they're calling this day. I can prove I'm really Isaac. Because right, right okay. now I'm going to get emails from people who said, hey, I'm Isaac. Can I have $20? And maybe they're going to call in and pretend to be whoever <laughs> else. I, I'm All saying right. you can email me, dear Mr. Atheist at gmail.com. Right. We can set it up and I will give you $20. Don't tell this guy about it to, to or just, I mean, whether you care about the money or not, I want to talk to that guy directly, personally. Yeah. That'd be great. I'll, I'll see what I can do because I would be very interested in that discussion. Me too. All right. Uh, so you, now you had to... some questions about uh, my belief in God? Yes. Jimmy has a question. Yeah. Why do you believe in God? Because it's a useful construct to me. Ooh. So you don't oh, believe cool. in God. You utilize, you cosplay a belief in God for its yeah. utility. So... I choose to believe in God, and I know that that's a contentious no, statement, but... You can't. That is contentious. Issue. You, 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 you cannot... Um, so, believing in God means that you are convinced that God is real. Yes. Okay. You don't... You aren't convinced of something by a choice. You're convinced for reasons. And when you say, I believe in God because I find so it a I useful put it construct... Way for a reason. Wait, 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 well, Isaac. I, I was told, Let Matt finish. When you say, I believe in God because I find it to be a useful construct, um, that is not equivalent to, I believe God is real. Calling God a useful construct doesn't mean that you believe in a God that is a real God. Mm -hmm. So which is it? Do you believe yep. that there's actually a God, or do you believe that God is a useful construct? Um, I believe that 
God exists for the things that, that I have been able to, to achieve with that belief. And to the outside world, there's no distinction between um, me simply believing that a God exists and me using God as a mental construct to achieve some goal. I, I didn't, so, wow. You, you have both claimed that you believe that God is real, that there is a, an existing, an extant agent actor and that God is a useful construct. I don't care about the useful construct. Yeah. I want to know what okay. evidence, what reason you have to be convinced that there is an agent actor God. That's not a thing that translates to other people is the problem. Um, Isaac, yeah, would you that, agree that, then? I'm, yeah, no. I'm agnostic. Isaac, would you agree so, that you don't, don't have a good that. reason anyone besides you should believe? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Okay, and which which God do you believe in? Do you, do you follow one of the... Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> do you participate in Christianity? Yeah. Do you participate in Judaism? It's do so you part- frustrating. Yeah. yeah. No. It's so frustrating to be like, um, I believe in a so, God, but this doesn't translate to anybody else. That is the definition of self-delusion. How many other things do I mean, you sure, believe? Yeah. You how many other like things that, do you be- how many other things do you believe that can't translate to other people? How many other esoteric beliefs do you have? Not many. Not many. Why Actually, would you I have that's the only one. any? Why would you have any? <laughs> Do you not care whether or not your beliefs um, are true? In that particular case, I actually don't. Oof. Okay. Oof. I, I don't Isaac. care what you, what you think about God. Sorry. Isaac, I, I want to put it kindly because when people yeah, hear words like, to, wait a right? second, Isaac, when people use words like I'm arrogance. I'm aware of what fucking rights I have. <laughs> Isaac, I, I, I want to put this kindly and, and, and make sure you understand that when I'm using words like arrogance, I'm not trying to attack you as an arrogant human, but I want you to really consider okay. this idea from my perspective of the arrogance of the position of in the millions of years that humans have existed and been able to communicate with each other and the billions of people who have died, I am the sole person who has the only, I only have a good reason for myself and it is myself and I accept it on truth that I'm the person in all of that history who has got God correct or the most correct or correct enough for me. That is, that is just something I cannot get my head around. And again, we've already established it. I am capable of tremendous arrogance. Oh. Um, if I may. Yeah, you may. That assumes that, that I'm under the impression that I have a particular uh, God in mind and that that is the correct belief. I only believe in, in the aspects of God that relate directly to me. You do. So you do. Um, ha- that's why Isaac, I don't really Isaac, even more You have arrogant. a particular God. You do have a particular God. You're, you think that me not, I'm not saying you're accepting a God of Christianity or a God anybody ever posited. I'm saying you accept Isaac's God. It is the ultimate position of arrogance. And again, I'm trying to not just sound rude when I I say it. I don't have a better word than that. Just think about it then, Isaac. But for real. What could be more arrogant than thinking that you have a personal God that is yours, that is justified, and the only one that is justified? What could be more arrogant than that? Well, that kind of assumes that that it's just my God. Isaac, think about... I'm, I'm not comfortable uh, th- with that yeah, assumption. It's what becoming, do you mean that it assumes that it's just your God? Like... How do I put this? If you have some unique idea about uh, the existence of the sun, for instance... Is it just your son? The son actually oh, exists and we make, share that it. That doesn't follow. This is pretty much what I told yeah, you, buddy. Yes, you don't make sense. That does not follow. Uh, the son is a, an, a, a 
physical entity that we are all aware of and can evaluate. Isaac, you basically repeated to me what I just told you was okay. the reason it's arrogant. Millions of years, billions of people, Isaac's God's the right one, and only you know that. Or only you accept it or choose to believe it. That's the point I was making about arrogance. And again, I wish I had a better word. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to say you're arrogant and I'm not, so I'm better than you. I'm talking about the arrogance of your position and why you need to reevaluate. And I believe you're becoming defensively pedantic now. Well, the question is just like, I guess I still don't understand what makes it arrogant. It's I, I don't hold that my beliefs are special. They're mine. Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. The call may have just put him back on hold. Uh, I accidentally slept the computer that's managing it. Let me get it back in. Ba -ba 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 -bum. I don't think it, it's arrogant to have the thoughts of my... The, huh. Isaac, can you hear me? I'm going to... Isaac, I'm putting you back in the queue if you can hear me because I'm having to fix the fucking stupidest thing I done, which is put this battery pack that's keeping my writing tablet right next to the power button on this computer. So that's going to get moved, and hopefully Isaac doesn't drop. For clarity, the, the, the aspects of this, the, so to believe that there is a God, but that your justification for believing God doesn't translate to other people is fine. Ready to connect. You may, Sorry. You may have had a private revelation. Now, whether or not uh, oh, that oh, private revelation you, is warranted, but but Isaac is it talking about? Oh, I Jesus Christ! I I thought it was done. I can't time it out. I was holding the mute down. I'm bringing Isaac back in right now, so Isaac okay. should be back on with us right now. Thanks, Isaac. Sorry. Okay. Oh. I was wondering All what right. happened. So here's the thing: That's there right. are billions of people throughout history who have believed in a god of some sort. Do you believe in a God that matches up with any of them? I honestly don't know. Um, cool. So it's possible, it well. it's possible that you have a belief in a God that only applies to you. Uh, can you please be more specific with that statement? Well, all right. Question in, number one was, do you share a God with anybody else? And you said, I don't know. And so the question number two was, is it then possible that you have a God that only applies to you? I don't know how to be more fucking clear about that. Yeah. Do you share money that applies to everybody oh, else? The, the or is it possible that, that the I'm the still fucking apply. talking? Okay. Is it possible that nobody else shares your God concept? Yes. Are you convinced that your God concept is correct? Uh, not the, every detail of it, no. Well, any fucking detail of it. At least one detail. I'm convinced. What correct. one yeah. fucking detail Not of your fucking aspect. God is fucking correct? That... He has granted me the ability to handle uh, specific aspects of my life. And so the I, I'm one sorry, thing... I'm, I'm just the, the not one thing, to get into the, the details of that. Then fuck right on off. Okay. You dishonest, smug, little, arrogant fuck. The one thing that's true about your God is that he's given you something. But that necessitates other characteristics, which you also believe are true. You have invented a God, and you are smugly dismissing everybody else's. I have zero interest in ever having a conversation with you about your God again. Yeah, Isaac, you need to do the same homework about confirmation bias we gave one of the other people and really look into it and think about how you might have applied it to your life. But I will still give you $20 to get me the thought crime guy on. Sure. Um, Just not you. Okay. Thanks, Isaac. I don't... I, I sit here for years and I try my best to formulate a question to get an answer. 
And then I have to reformulate it and reformulate it and reformulate it because you theists, you cowardly, dishonest theist, which isn't all theists, hashtag not all theists, <laughs> hashtag not all theists. refuse to answer the question you're asked. There are, I've done this for a while. If the question is flawed, you can still point that out. But if you're mm -hmm. going to sit here and say, I don't know how it's arrogant for me to think that I'm right about God and I might be the only one. I don't know how it's, uh, there's only one thing about God that I know to be true, and that's he's given me certain ability, which you don't know that to be true. You, d you need to make a fucking causal connection to demonstrate that it comes from a God. And you, you're like, oh, this doesn't translate. There is not an active agent entity in the entirety of existence who could give me something such that I would not be able to explain to everyone else exactly how I know that that entity gave me this thing. That's not possible. It is not possible for an agent to give me something and for it to be, gosh, it's just really difficult for me to explain to anybody else how I know that Arden gave me this, how I know that Jimmy gave me this, how I know that God gave me this. It's every time we get to God gives you something, all of a sudden it's just too difficult. If it's so fucking difficult, then you're admitting that you don't have evidentiary warrant to believe it in the first place, but you won't say that. And that's the truth. That's the truth that you're afraid to admit even to yourself. And I don't blame you, and I'm not mad at you or mad at the caller. This is what religion, this is what superstition, this is what irrationality, this is what a failure of skepticism and critical thinking does to a functional mind. It turns it into fucking soup. And there's, there's, it's a reason that we do what we do. There's something strange about how unique that people really believe with how many people there have been that their experience is this unique thing that people who don't believe, well, you you never got my thing, so you'd believe if you had done what I did, but yeah. but you didn't, so you wouldn't. I remember years ago talking to my dad and finding out my dad legitimately believed, despite the fact that he he was basically Mormon clergy uh, uh, and and had met lots and lots of people, went on a Mormon mission, and yet still well into his sixties. I, th I think was the right, yeah, I think that's the right age, believed that other churches didn't teach you to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that that was a unique thing about Mormonism, that you have this uniquely personal relationship with God and Jesus, and you know, that this, this ability to be, it's you and him and you are the main character. And not only does do other churches do it, it's most of them. But this yeah. man who considers himself somehow theologically well-equipped completely missed that because it undermines his position as the main character of the video game. Uh, and, and you see it. I feel like that was what I was hearing out of Isaac was this uniqueness he believes his position holds. Isaac also, it, it's become clear by what he is and isn't willing to talk wants to believe that he has created an unassailable position. And the only way that he can maintain it as unassailable is to refuse to talk about the things that are problematic and then just deny all the rest of it, right down to it's something that he doesn't care whether or not it's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think you're a liar. Every time somebody tells me I don't believe care whether this belief is true, I think you're a liar, and I think you're lying to yourself first. But, you know... Oh, if, it's not, if, if you don't care whether it's true, why the fuck are you talking to us about it? Because we actually give a shit about what's real and what's not real. I wish my prayer story didn't have specifically to do with pooping. Otherwise, I would tell it a lot more. Because it is very useful when I tell that story and, and people acknowledge that we're talking to. And I think Haley did it earlier. I think it was Haley. That, yes, that would have served as good enough evidence for them. And they're probably even a little surprised I now don't believe. And then to follow it up yeah. with like, and then this happened, uh, uh, if it weren't. And that's it, normal. Yeah. It's, it would have been normal for you to reach the same conclusion that Haley did and anybody else did, having not done enough investigation. Exactly. That I get. When, we, when people call in, and, and we're going to get to our last call here in just a second. When people call in and they present their case for God, I, our goal here isn't, deny at all costs. It's people are really bad at A, 
explaining what it is that they believe and B explaining why they believe those yeah. two things are incredibly problematic when you consider that they believe something that is shared by a majority of people and that still has not ever demonstrated any capacity to meet its burden of proof. And so you've got this collective of constant social reinforcement. Oh, you feel Jesus, you feel this, and we're the, and the devil will come after you, and that's the devil doing this to you, and this is this, and this is, and it, it builds up this cacophony of confirmation that isn't just self-confirmation. You've got everybody around going, yeah, go get it. Fuck those atheists. Those atheists are just mean. They're all hateful. They're all trying to forcibly convert you. you know, nothing forcible about it. We are asking questions about how you could demonstrate the truth of something, and it is not my fault. It is not Jimmy's fault. It is not the fault of skepticism or science that you believe something that you don't give a shit if it's true and you don't have any way to prove it. That's your fault. Yeah. that you accept something that you can't prove. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's take that last call. I know I have lots of thoughts about this. I'll uh but I'll let you go. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to let you go first cuz I think I'll get a little ranty. Uh B in I, Scotland. I'm happy to do that. Sure. B in Scotland. Welcome to show B. Pronouns they them. You're on the line. Hi guys. Um I'm a little bit nervous. Um I'm very socially anxious and autistic, so I've turned off the live chat just so I don't need to see it. Sure. <laughs> um, That's good. But yeah, um, I was just wanting to talk to you guys about, um, so I recently became an atheist and I was, um, I was actually raised Mormon and then I was evangelical um, um, up until kind of my friend um, took his own life when I was 17 and that kind of made my faith fell apart and it was mostly because of the reactions of the Christian church that made my faith kind of fall apart because they told me that because he took his own life he would be in hell and things like that and that's what made me start to question um, uh. but now that I'm an atheist and I don't believe in kind of anything anymore I was just wondering like how do like how to kind of still have sorry uh, my train of thought is messy. No, you're um, fine. It's easy. How, how I would still kind of be able to process grief without having a belief in things like heaven and things like an afterlife. That's kind of my question. Yeah. I, I've got loads of thoughts and some good news. Um, first of all, very sorry that your friend took his own life. Um, I'm even more sorry that people use that as an opportunity to say things about them that don't apply. Um, not all Christians, not all religions hold that suicide is a, you know, a crime that's going to damn you to hell. That's a predominantly a Catholic thing. Um, a lot of others are a little uh, less in your face about where they what they think is going to happen. But it's disgusting that they weren't talking about your friend, how valuable your friend was, how valuable they were to you. None of that is a reason to stop believing in a God, by the way. Um, there could be a God who's just an absolute prick um, and is punishing people for things. We Religion poisons us to the point where we're really bad at dealing with mental health issues and the other things that lead to an increase in suicide. Um, mm. And that, plus all of the hatred it, that they launch around at the queer community and other things also increases suicide but mm -hmm. the good news is you're talking about how to deal with grief now that you're an atheist and first of all there's an organization i don't know if it's still around you can try to reach out to it called grief beyond belief um there's also the secular therapy project and both of those um might be useful one more than the other for getting you to a counselor to talk about uh, how you feel about all this but for me, grief can only be properly dealt with from a non-religious perspective, at least with regard to religions that are talking about an afterlife. We have no reason to think there's any sort of afterlife at all, which means all of the available evidence points to this life being the one and only life we're going to get. This is the one mm. that matters. And when it's over, as far as I can tell, that's the end. What religions do is they seem to construct a story 
that, oh, you will see your friend again in paradise, in heaven, or in hell. And so it encourages us to not treat people right the first time, because mm -hmm. it, like if I have a falling out with my dad, um, which I hope I don't, but if it happens, it happens. As a Christian, he's got the notion that, oh, well, when we're up in heaven, if, if he makes it to heaven, um, we can resolve it then. We can make it up to mm -hmm. them. And it was in an article that was written by Penn Jillette years ago. It was, I think, the first one that I read that really uh, did a good job of making the point that this is the one and only life you know you're going to get. And so I would rather treat people right the first time rather than waiting to get to heaven to fix it. That's one aspect of it. But I think we're doing a really bad job of teaching people that, number one, death is a natural outcome of life. And if we were raised with the understanding that all of us are going to die eventually, I think we would have better tools for dealing with that loss. It would still be a terrible blow for someone to, I, I hate the phrase die before their time, but you know, if, if somebody dies of old age in their 90s, that's functionally different from a baby dying of cancer or someone taking their own life in their teens or 20s. Those have a different impact on us because what we're missing is not just the person, but everything the person could have been and everything that they could have been to us and to interact with us. Definitely. When someone who's elderly dies, we, we can kind of go, wow, they, they had a good life. They, they got to that point and there was probably not much more that we could have hoped for after that. Mm. That's why those hit harder. And as an atheist, I'm able to actually grieve both the loss of the person and what they meant to me. The past for me is in the past already. So if, if somebody I love dies tomorrow, the past are my memories, but I'm not grieving the past because the past is gone. I'm grieving what would have been and what could have been. And when we, when we start by acknowledging that it's inevitable and that when, when we have situations where someone willfully, knowingly ends their life, when it could have been extended and better, and not just better for them, but better for all of the people around them, that's where, for me, that's what we're grieving. Not the loss of the person, but what the loss of the person could have been and what they could have been and would have been to us. And I don't think you can do that properly if your belief system includes this notion that they're now in a better place or they're now in a worse place. And so I find preaching at funerals to be really annoying. And I find the people who are saying, oh, God needed another angel to be almost, almost as repugnant as those who would tell you that your friend is in hell. And I think that only through a secular lens, looking at the facts of life and an understanding of human psychology and emotion and knowing how we interact with people, I think only in that situation can there be proper grieving and that everything else from my point of view is play acting. It's like, Oh, I miss, you know, I miss mom, but I'll see her again in heaven. That's when you haven't dealt with the things that are still here. You've just put that off to try to deal with it later. And as far mm -hmm. as I can tell, there isn't going to be a later. So I'd recommend looking up grief beyond belief, possibly secular therapy project, but really, the fact that you have concerns about how people are being awful and manipulative and using <clears throat> your memories and your loss to try to convince you of something that would make this worse, mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to come out the other side of this much better and with the skills to grieve better the next time as well i think like personally for me one of the reasons i wanted to cling to my faith after he died was because he had such a shitty life you know my friend was transgender and um that was part of the reasons that he kind of became suicidal and um yeah so just I just I want to point to believe out that he'd gone to a better place. You know what I mean? Yeah. And those same people who told you that your friend was going to hell is are really who I think killed your friend. Not, not him. Yeah. Uh, because that's, 
this this is why suicidality is so high amongst trans people. Uh, the, the things I wanted to add, I, I reflecting most of what Matt just said there, but I also understand from the secular position, almost being jealous of religious people who get to have what is essentially compartmentalized denial, because that's what they're selling, mm. is denial. You don't have to actually acknowledge the death of the person you loved. But when somebody dies you love, you die a little too. And it takes a little bit from you. And so this actually came up in the Zoom call last week. I wish we'd record it because I felt like I was much more articulate and on, on point last week. But the point I would make is how should you react when somebody is dead, when somebody you love is lost? And there's a lot of this idea of like grief should only come to a point and should only be about missing people from the theistic perspective. But you're going to see them again one day. I tell people who are asking how to grieve first, kind of like Matt said, actually grieve, let it destroy you. It, if you love somebody enough, it can incapacitate you for a couple of days. Obviously you have to work around your real life job and everything. Capitalism's still a cruel bitch, but we still have to deal with it. Uh, uh, but it should, it, you should collapse at times. You should, if, if somebody, and, and I think most of us hope other people do when we go, if it's super easy for me to, to die on everybody else, that kind of sucks because it means no one really loved me. I, it, it, yeah. you, you want that for others and, and you can think about that too. So let it be that a part of you died. Let it make you collapse. Let it make you grieve. But the beautiful thing is our brains account for that. It's actually a part of our brain. Crying, being devastated, sends signals to your brain to begin healing. And it can actually make you, the denial can make the grief process way, way longer. You're never going to let go of your friend. I'm not saying that one day it'll be okay that your friend is gone, but you'll be okay. You'll do better. And the day that the day that every time you think about your friend makes you right now, it's just going to make you probably tear up. It's going to make you sad. It's going to make you devastated, but you can work toward the day that when you think of your friend, it makes you happy. And the memories mm -hmm. actually like bring joy to you because you're like, fuck yeah, that was the life I got to have with that person. And if you don't do that, if you don't do the process of healing, your brain isn't going to just do it for you as it's compartmentalized in the background. And you actually get really unhealthy psychological views and ways people act out because they compartmentalize that thing, which is dying to be grieved over. Uh, so, so the, the, of course I'm jealous of the people who when I am experiencing a loss, don't have to go through what I'm going through. And it looks really appealing, but you actually might not be jealous if you knew long-term what that grief was doing to them that they're refusing to face versus what you're able to come to one day. Again, your the memory of that friend of yours will one day be happy. Even right now, it probably just sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, it, it just sucks right now, you know? Good. Um, it, be good. Really sucks. Good. That meant you loved him. It should suck a fucking ton. Sorry for being crass, but I don't know how to accentuate it. I hope it keeps sucking for a while because it means you loved him and you had a meaningful thing. If it didn't suck, that would make your friend's death sadder to me because it yeah. should suck. Your friend was worth it sucking for. So let it suck while it needs to suck and heal and get through it and cry and collapse and do what you have to do. Your friend died, so did part of you. Acknowledge it and let that let that be what happens. And also go yeah. talk to some actual experts, yeah. not just me and Jimmy, okay, who have no expertise in anything. Well, Jimmy has expertise. Sorry, guys. I know I, that, like, you know, this is kind of a lower caliber of what you guys normally talk about because you guys are normally talking about these big intellectual. No, this was the most. Be, mine this, is a bit more emotional. This was the most. This was my favorite call, call of the, the day. Show. Right. This this was the most important call we took today. Just so you know. And on that note, so I apologize, B, but we got to wrap it up. Please take care of yourself. Call us back, um, you know, if, if we can be helpful. But, yeah, yeah. it's uh, – this was my favorite call of the day. And I hope you – I'm agreeing with Jimmy. I hope you stay miserable for a little bit and that it tapers off uh, to where you can still reflect on how much he meant um, and yet move on because, to me, that's – the grief is important – I worry that religion makes people incredibly calloused uh, towards 
the true value of life uh, by adding yeah. an eternity to it that's unjustified. Truly. Thank you, B. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. See you later. We are already over time, uh, so we're just going to wrap this up very quickly. Uh, catch all our programming this week. This was Matt Dillahunty. I'm Jimmy Snow, and if you just stay on here, it should automatically take you over. I'm headed to r and Ra's channel. We're reading and roasting the Book of Mormon, M more roasting than reading, uh, and I will see you all over there. Thanks for watching.